Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at clothing design and structure. So we're going to be looking at the structure of the clothing, how you can use the appearance editor to modify the various uh, substances and uh, various input values that you can use. If you want to create uh, cool looking outfits like the ones you see on the screen right now, you can just uh, follow along. Let's start off in character creator with this base female character, which you can find over here in your base uh, projects. Now I'm going to press control P before we go into anything here. And I'll just make sure we select something, press control P, go into our preferences here. And down at the bottom, we have the appearance editor performance. Now, if you have more than two gigabytes of uh, video RAM, you can use this uh, maximize video memory usage option right here to get faster performance. And if you have more than eight gigabytes uh, recommended of system memory, you can deselect this load one, load one substance at a time here, and that'll allow you to open up more than one appearance editor at a time. We'll talk more about that later. So let's close down this preferences here, and let's take a look at our character's dress. So I'm gonna zoom in on the dress a little bit here. Let's go over here to the appearance tab and select the dress. So I'm going to activate the appearance editor. Now we're gonna take a look at how you can apply different effects to different areas of this dress. Now the way we do that is by using input maps. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to twirl down this dress side bottom here. And you can see if I just twirl this over a little bit, let's just move this over. You can see we have input maps. If we go to dress, there's a whole bunch of categories and it may look a bit intimidating, but let's kind of analyze them first. We have input maps here. And if I open up input maps, the uh, section here, we have an RGB mask. And this allows us to apply different effects, different fabrics and different materials to different areas of our cloth base. So I'm just going to close this down right now. If you want to see on the character which part corresponds to which, you can select Enable in the Diagnostic section, and we have black, green, and red. And those colors correspond, if we go to the Fabric section, those, co those colors correspond to the black base fabric, Fabric 1 red, and Fabric 2 green. So let's go back to the input maps and disable that Diagnostic mode by deselecting it. And let's go into our black fabric first, the base fabric, which is this one on the top. If I go into this, you can see we have a number of different input maps and we have an option for material. I can choose cotton, I can choose uh, you know denim, I can choose uh, leather, but notice that the colors are a little bit off. So let's go back to cotton. And what you wanna do is reset these values down here for hue, saturation, and lightness because it really depends on the item of clothing you have. And this will take it back to the originals. And you can also double click the other um, text as well to make sure it resets to the original values. And now if we go to cotton, uh, denim, you can go to uh, leather. If you're into like, you know, wearing wood or metal, we also have those as well. Uh, we also have plastic there as well. Let's go back to, uh, let's keep it at leather right now. And you may notice that the resolution is pretty decent, but we can actually do better with the resolution. And the way you can do that is by selecting your dress main item up here, going up to output size and selecting 2048 by 2048. And once that loads up, you'll be able to see we have much stronger detail uh, on the character clothing. However, when you're modifying your character in Character Creator, I would recommend using the uh, real-time default, which is 1024 by 1024. And you can see it still looks pretty good. If you want to export it uh, high resolution, you can do that later. Let's go back to our uh, fabrics here in our base fabric black. So we have the leather material selected. Let's close this one down and let's open up the fabric one, which is red. So now we can change this one from cotton to leather as well. And you can see the result down there, it turns black. And if we wanna reset the uh, diffuse HSL, we can double click that text again and do the same thing. And then we can also uh, go down to the very bottom and you see we have a section called seams normal and seams blur. Now all the fabrics have this except for the base fabric. And this is used for creating a very realistic kind of stitching uh, effect between the seams. And so let's just, uh, increase that value right there and increase the seams blur. And you can see we get that nice uh, normal effect. If we zoom out, now it looks like we're actually stitching together two separate fabrics as opposed to just, to just colors beside each other. And we can go into fabric two green as well and go to the very bottom and do the same thing. Increase the seams normal and increase the blur. And you can see the effect is quite strong. We get a much nicer effect and it actually looks much more realistic as far as uh, seams are concerned. Again, more like we actually have seams in the dress. So let's move on from the seams then, and let's take a look at a different dress. I'm gonna select this one. We're gonna go over to clothing, and in our full body, I'm gonna select this dress C right here. We can just replace it. We can replace it or choose the material only. It doesn't really matter. And we need to activate the appearance editor one more time. And let's take a look at this one. Let's go into dress, into input maps, into our diagnostic mode. 
And this one, the entire base is just black. So we only have to deal with the one base fabric. Let's go to fabric over here to our base fabric. And you can see this one has a diffuse map in the diffuse channel and a specular map as well. And the material is set to input. Now we can increase the density and all the other values here as well. Uh, we're not going to fool around with that too much. This tutorial is going to be a very general tutorial. We're not going to go into detail on all the different tools there. So we'll just go ahead and just do that. And we have all these other dresses we can take a look at as well. But let's go ahead and delete this dress for now. I'm going to select this dress and delete it. And we're going to look at patterns. Now to look at patterns, I'm going to give her some underwear and we'll give her some, uh, we'll give her a nice bra right here, bra E. And then we'll go down to uh, give her another, uh, we'll give her underwear bottoms E right there. Just double click that. And let's take a look at the patterns on this clothing. Now you can edit these patterns uh, using the various substance sliders. So let's select our bra and let's activate the appearance editor. And I'm going to go into the bra again, into input maps. And let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. We have a black section and a red section for the stripes, or for the straps rather. Let's go ahead and disable that for now. And let's go into our fabrics. Let's take a look at our black fabric right here. So now we can go down to the very bottom and we have a couple of sliders for uh, plaid opacity and pattern opacity. And those correspond to the pattern section right here, plaid and pattern. So let's see which ones we're using right now. By taking these sliders, we can take down pattern two. You can see nothing there. Pattern three, no effect. However, if we take down plaid opacity one, you can see that we're using the plaid section to modify the stripes, the pattern on this bra right here. So if we go into pattern and we go into plaid, you can see we have stripe color one, which we can change the stripe opacity. We can do that or we can, uh, up, and we can actually add stripe color four by increasing the opacity there and getting a nice uh, cross hatching plaid pattern. And you can, you know, modify all the colors and the stripes. There's various values that you can modify down here, thickness, offset, uh, iteration, if we want to do that a little, increase that a little bit, we can do that as well. All these various, various different ways that you can uh, modify your pattern. We're not going to get into that in this tutorial. I just want to show you that potential and you can modify that on your own time. Say, for example, now we want to change the strap to match the uh, main part of the uh, bikini here. Then we can go down to fabric and let's choose the second fabric, which I believe, or the second section, which I believe was red from the RGB mask. And let's go down here. We can see this one, our plaid opacity is zero. But we do have these opacity, these pattern opacities up to 100%. So we can take that one down, for example, and just increase that plaid opacity. And then we have the same pattern that we created earlier. So now we have a consistent uh, type of uh, bikini or a consistent pattern on our bikini there anyways. So let's go ahead and take a look at another option. If we choose these underwear bottoms, we can replace the ones that we currently have. These are totally not gonna match, but it doesn't really matter. Just wanna kind of show you the different uh, types of patterns there are. So underwear bottoms, let's activate the appearance editor there again. And let's take a look into diagnostic mode here. Let's see what we're dealing with. The black section is what we wanna deal with here. So again, we'll go into fabrics, base fabrics black. And let's take a look at our patterns. You can see we have pattern opacity one. Take that down, nothing happens. Pattern opacity two, we can take that down. Half of the dots disappear and pattern opacity three, all the, the other half disappear. Let's keep pattern opacity three up and let's go into pattern, pattern three and see what we're dealing with here. You can see we have type set to dot. We can change that from dot to, uh, you know, hound's tooth to uh, maple leaf to any of these other values. And we can increase the density octave or, uh, you know, the size. There's a size somewhere along here. Uh, scale, width, and height. We can, you know, increase the size of those uh, maple leaves. We can uh, rotate them, randomize them, uh, randomize the size and everything. Uh, but we're not going to go into too much detail on that. I just want to show you again the possibility. So let's close this down and let's add in a couple of uh, different items. Let's go to our uh, skirts over here and we're going to use the essential clothing pack, which does not come included with the free version of character creator. You have to purchase this separately from the content store, which I certainly recommend. It's a really awesome uh, pack. Let's go ahead and uh, open this uh, mini skirt right here. We can give her a nice uh, Celtic or Scottish or whatever it is uh, skirt over top there. And if we take this mini skirt, you can activate the appearance editor here as well. And into our uh, input maps right here, diagnostic, we just have that black input map as well. So the black, if we go into our uh, fabrics, black right here, we have pattern one, which is a single pattern. And you can see if we take that down, this is actually made of a diffuse map. So let's go to pattern, pattern one, and you can see it's a diffuse map with a normal map and a specular map, and the type is set to input. So you can do that as well. Let's just go ahead and add in a different, more uh, maybe conservative type of skirt right there. We'll just double click this skirt C and that'll replace our uh, Highlander uh, skirt right there. 
And let's go ahead and add a camisole as well. As well. You can find those in shirts under essential clothing pack uh, under this camisole right here. Just double click that and add it to our character. Now you'll see something at the bottom of this camisole here. You'll see a little bit of uh, overlap on the meshes. To fix this, all you need to do is go up to conform with your camisole selected and select calculate collision. It may not work the first time, but you can also select it again. And you can see we still have a little bit of a uh, jagged edges over there. You can also increase the size as another option to like 0.8 or something like that. And normally that should work for the entire um, outfit. So that's how you can really quickly modify the uh, shape of the clothing to fit your character, to conform to your character. Let's take a look at the cardigans that we have in the, the Essential Pack as well by going to Coats and into Essential Clothing. And you can see now if I load up this Cardigan B, we'll do the same thing. We'll just conform this to our, uh, our character again. Calculate Collision, Calculate Collision. You can increase the size slightly. You can also increase the margin or whatever. We'll talk more about that in separate tutorials though. Now let's take a look at how many options we have for manipulating this cardigan by loading the Appearance Editor. And you can see with this cardigan, if we go into Input Maps and we go to Diagnostic, you can see we have almost every color of the rainbow here uh, to manipulate in our RGB mask. We're able to manipulate the every single fabric section here, even as far down as the buttons themselves. So we have the green and the red on the buttons as well. So we have a lot of different options for that. So for example, if we you know go out of uh, Diagnostic mode, we go into our fabrics and uh, blue, for example, we can just quickly change this from cotton to denim. And we get a nice result there on the shoulders for the section that was defined as blue. And we can switch this out for this cardigan as well. Let's just uh, replace the material only in this case. That way we don't need to uh, conform it again. And we now have this uh, nice blazer or this nice cardigan right here. And I want to talk about decals. We have a nice little decal on the chest of this character as well. Again, we need to activate the appearance editor and take a quick look at this decal. So uh, let's load down the uh, twirl down the cardigan section again. Let's take a look at decals down here. So we have decal one, two, and three. Let's load up decal one, and we have all these input maps. Now we also have, uh, you know, decals that are integrated into Character Creator. We can go to type over here. We certainly, we currently have input. We can change that to like pocket one. We can change it to like a nice skull or something like that, skull and crossbones. And if we want to change the, uh, you know, position of this, we can do so as well. We can uh, rotate it. Uh, we can scale it up and, you know, uh, scale up really large if we wanted to be, you know, more proud of being a skull member. Maybe she went to the College of Skulls or uh, who knows. Anyways, we'll we can scale that up and rotate it and, you know, modify it in various different ways. That kind of looks cool. Maybe a little bit too big, though. Let's just bring it down a little bit. There we go. We'll keep it at the original size. So those decals you can modify separately as well. And last but not least, we have the effects section. In the effects section, you can do some tearing. You can do some effects. If we go into effects, we have like this dust effect. We can, you know, add a layer of dust onto the top of our cardigan. There's a edge wearing as well. We can increase the edge wearing. You can see the result right there. If we increase the brightness, it's a bit more apparent right there. And we also have under uh, procedural aging, we can, you know, age the sweater slightly, something like that, and decrease or increase the brightness. We have uh, procedural dirt. We can, you know, increase the dirt splatter or the pattern. Uh, in all sorts of different ways. Again, we're not going to go into too much detail on these. We also have holes, which I'm going to enable right now. And you can see we have some holes on the character's uh, sweater. We can uh, change the spread of those holes, maybe make them a little bit larger, and change the pattern slightly. Let's try something like, uh, like this. You can see right now we have a big hole, but we can't actually see our character's arm, which is a big problem. So let's go ahead and select our character's cardigan over here. And the way to fix this is go to conform and deselect hide inner mesh because it's basically just hiding everything underneath the cardigan at this point. So we'll deselect that and now you can see our character's arm again. So that's how you can, you know, fix that uh, issue if you ever have it. And that's procedural holes. Again, and there's a whole variety of different types of clothing that come with the uh, Character Creator Essential Pack. I'd really recommend uh, checking it out. It's well worth your time. Let's take a last look at discoloration by loading up a pair of pants under the Essential Clothing. And we have these skinny pants for female right here, skinny pants C. And that will replace our skirt because not many people wear skirts over top of their jeans. We can activate the appearance editor. And now let's focus on, let's twirl this down, let's focus on the effect of discoloration. We'll go into discoloration 2. You can see there's a discoloration mask right there. And if we uh, modify the opacity of that, you can see how exactly it's affecting those jeans. So there's all sorts, it's very flexible, very intuitive uh, using these substance material sliders to modify your, your character's clothing. Really awesome, lots of freedom. 
And again, we're just touching the surface here, but I'm just going to go ahead and export this because I just wanted to give you a quick summary. Now the way we can export it is we can go up here and add it directly to iClone, or we can go here and select Export iAvatar. Let's select that for now because that gives us the option to change the resolution. So if you want to have a much more detailed character, we can increase the resolution here, or we can just press OK and export it as real-time quality. We'll call her something like a college girl or something like that because it looks like she's wearing a college sweater even though there's a skull on it. And we save that to our desktop. So let's go ahead and uh, down to our desktop here that we have collegegirl.iAvatar and let's load it up into uh, iClone by clicking and dragging it over into iClone. And then we can uh, select our character, apply a nice motion to her. We can go into motions and uh, we can also switch her hair as well. If we go into actor, let's switch her hair first. Let's go into avatar and uh, those rather accessories. We have the hair in the accessories. We have this hottest hair pack. If I just bring this over a little bit, hottest hairstyles. That's a G6 pack that we have in the content store as well. Let's give her a nice layered bob. And then we can select the original hair from the scene manager here. If we just twirl that over, bring that over a little bit, delete the hair. And now we have a redhead. And if we select the hair, I think it's maybe a little bit too far back. We can press the W hotkey and just bring it up a little bit. There we go. Very sensual looking uh, layered bob. And we can apply a quick motion to her. Content motion. And I like to use the street dance uh, girl style here. We'll give her a routine. This routine 01. Whoops. We can't apply that to the hair, obviously. <laughs> Let's select the character first. Routine 01. And there we go. So that's really uh, your basics for, uh, you know, customizing the fabrics on your character. I just wanted to talk about the design and the structure. You can go into all those different categories on your own time and we will have separate tutorials on those in the future as well. So if you have any questions for now, you can check our forums at forum.reillusion.com or you can contact me at developer at as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.